Jeff Wiener, the CEO of LinkedIn, now Microsoft owned. And part of the reason why we're talking today, it was three years ago this week that Microsoft announced its intent to buy LinkedIn for $26.2 billion. Back then, quarterly reports, I was looking back through it, revenue for LinkedIn was growing the mid-20% to mid-30% range. The most recent Microsoft report, LinkedIn grew 29% in constant currency three years later. That's unusual. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. What's driving that growth now versus three years ago? Yeah, uh, we are uh, very happy with the results since then. You know, most acquisitions, the integration can be very challenging. And uh, I think by virtue of the way things were set up from the get-go, uh, it's, it's really exceeded expectations. And uh, this model of independence has really been working for us. Uh, you mentioned the growth rates, uh, trailing 12 months, uh, we'll do, uh, we did $6.4 billion of revenue. Uh, and that, uh, over that 12-month period, is up 31% uh, year over year. Shortly after the announcement, uh, within about uh, a year uh, of that time, about six months after uh, we closed, uh, the growth rate slowed to about 17%. So it's actually been meaningful acceleration since that time. And there's a few different factors behind that. Uh, one is that uh, we continue to grow engagement, the way in which members are engaging with LinkedIn. We continue okay. to invest aggressively uh, in our feed experience, the relevancy of our feed, the active job seeker experience, our messaging capabilities. And those things translate into revenue how? Uh, they grow sessions. So sessions uh, has grown 27% uh, uh, this past fiscal year. Uh, grew about 24% this last quarter. Uh, these are tens of billions of sessions, north of 30, 30 billion for uh, this current fiscal year. And uh, that's a rising tide that lifts all boats. Uh, it generates increasing advertising inventory. It generates more top funnel experience for subscriptions. Uh, it generates more data. Uh, that's a big part of uh, our recruiter product, our sales solutions product. Uh, we have more people we can reach with our learning products. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the increase in engagement has been a big part of that. That's one. Two, uh, I think we continue to improve our execution in terms of our go-to-market motion and our enterprise efforts. Uh, a much better understanding of how we create customer value, uh, greater focus on return on investment as a result across all of our enterprise businesses, the talent solutions business, uh, the marketing solutions business, sales solutions, learning solutions. Uh, we've seen uh, bigger spend over longer periods of time. And then third is uh, the macro environment. Mm. So, uh, you know, certainly tax reform has helped. Uh, the economy is going well. Uh, and as a result, uh, we see increasing demand for these products and services. We talked a lot uh, before the Microsoft acquisition about LinkedIn as being uh, driven by HR, by hiring people, seeking jobs. I hear Microsoft talking a lot more about Sales Navigator, about the CRM enhancing capabilities of LinkedIn. Is that a bigger growth area for you now than talent is? Uh, it's growing faster. It's growing faster off of a smaller base. The reason you hear more about that in the context of Microsoft specifically is it's been one of those areas where we have focused our integration efforts as opposed to more of an independent uh, approach. Uh, so we have our Sales Navigator product, uh, which enables salespeople uh, to reach out to, to source pipeline, uh, to connect with prospects and, and close deals more effectively. And uh, we've coupled that Sales Navigator product with a deep integration with Microsoft Dynamics and their Dynamics CRM offering. And uh, Microsoft has a specific uh, go-to-market uh, sales approach there. So that's one of the reasons you've heard a little bit more about that. I've covered Microsoft for a long time. A lot of Microsoft executives want to be public company CEOs. Hmm. You're a former public company CEO <laughs> who's now a Microsoft executive. Yeah, Why are yeah. you still there? It's gone the other way. Um, I mean, frankly, it's, it's a dream job. Uh, it was a dream job before I got to Microsoft. I, I was just having this conversation with Satya the other day. Uh, it's even more so now. The ability to focus 100% on the realization of our mission and vision uh, is, uh, especially in the current environment, uh, this notion of creating economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. Uh, that, that purpose uh, is something I'm really passionate about. I have the opportunity to work with an extraordinary group of individuals uh, and to pursue our mission and vision alongside of them uh, is just something that uh, we're all collectively very passionate about. 
Uh, it's also, you know, operating within Microsoft, uh, this opportunity to leverage uh, their scale, over a billion individuals using their products and services on a global basis. Give an example of how that's helped your growth. Uh, sure. So uh, we have had the opportunity to uh, leverage uh, LinkedIn profile information uh, and data pretty seamlessly within the Outlook experience and the Office experience, which I think in addition uh, to driving more traffic into our ecosystem also just raises awareness in terms of the power and the value of LinkedIn. That would be an example. But I think, uh, interestingly enough, uh, part of the reason for our success is this model of independence and the fact that uh, being a part of Microsoft not necessarily needing uh, to focus on the immediate term uh, quarter to quarter to be able to focus longer term three years out five years out in terms of what we're trying to accomplish which was very much by design in terms of uh, the discussion Satya and I initially had on, on why we thought this would make sense has been a huge driver. Got to ask a macro question. You get a lot of granular data yeah. from pretty much across the globe about demand, about hiring. Any storm clouds on the horizon? Well, uh, Dan Roth, our executive editor, was recently uh, on CNBC talking about um, uh, slowing uh, for the recent month's uh, data. Uh, in terms of new hires. Uh, I wouldn't read too much into it just yet. Uh, we saw uh, a prior slowing uh, several months ago and a number of people started to say, is this marking a, a cyclical downturn? Uh, and then we immediately saw uh, that turn back up. I think there's a lot of noise in the system. I think between tariffs, some of the global trade worries, uh, there may have been um, some slowing and hiring. Uh, we continue to see uh, strength uh, where you might expect it, uh, uh, technology, IT, uh, software, uh, we're seeing uh, growth there. We're seeing growth in corporate services, uh, mm -hmm. areas like uh, management consulting, PR, uh, and we do continue to see a decline uh, also where you might expect it, manufacturing, agriculture, farming, and some pockets of retail. Okay. Well, Jeff Weiner, CEO at LinkedIn.